the things that are really enticing about doing something like this are also the things that are terrifying about it and vice versa. I mean, it's the Incredible Hulk. If you put that picture up in Senegal, they know what it is. If you put it up in Thailand, they know what that is. There's nowhere they don't know what the Hulk is. We wanted to come up with the design of the Hulk that stood up to his most famous incarnations in the comic books. I wanted something really human. I wanted something really uber human. I wanted, I wanted to feel texture. I wanted to feel skin. I wanted to feel veins. So this, this was important for me to hone in on, on a great looking Hulk. Not only are we trying to invent a Hulk that looks real, uh, we have to also honor the original material that it came from. Well, I was basically uh, the bridge between uh, Louis's idea, his brain, and uh, the visual effects house to create what they needed to, to create in the film. We actually, in our first conversation, you know, looked at some of the previous designs and comics and film and TV and just tried to figure out and hone in what was that going to be. Is it the bone sticking out? What is it? So they, it takes a long time to kind of work through. Right, yeah. All the way he deforms in every position. So right, yeah. It just needs to be massaged a little yeah. more. Because that looks good. That looks exactly like the statue I, I, I always loved, you know. If you look at the television series, it was, of course, Lou Ferrigno, basically, six feet tall. If you look at the Ang Lee film, he was upwards of 15 feet tall. Which I think, in hindsight, we think is a little too big. The separation between Hulk and humans is much too great there. In the comics, of course, it varies from artist to artist, even varies from panel to panel. But he settles in around 9 to 10 feet tall. So we firmly establish him as nine feet tall in this film. Is that all you got? From the comic books, you look at him, you know, from the spiked hair, the really short hair, the longer hair. There's so many different ways you can go with it, but they all feel like the Hulk when you look at it in the comic. There was a design I did that basically um, had like kind of a military cut, you know, shaved on the side and kind of spiked, and it had an interesting look to it. And that was actually, for a while, that was the direction we were going, you know, until Louis went back to, I want the long hair. Went down on the forehead, it was going a teeny bit lower, it was going a teeny bit lower than the brow, and it was falling on the nose, you know, the, 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 the bump of the nose. Bridge, yeah. And I liked that, I thought it was, it was cool. And I tend to agree with him, I think it was kind of, it's, it gives him a lot of character, and it's something we haven't seen in the Hulk yet in a film or the TV show. I wanted the zero gram of fat, like, pumped, fierce, strong, tall, human-looking, with some green skin, uh, guy, and that's what I wanted. There was a process where I was designing, thinking bodybuilder to start off with, and, uh, and Louis said, no, 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 we don't want the lats that big. That feels like a bodybuilder. It needs to be like a superhuman. It's, it's a superhuman. I mean, it's really close yeah. to say this, but he's like, a, like on edge and everything, really powerful. Cool, good, yeah, it's great. We didn't want him to look so bulky that we didn't feel like he could move quickly. We want him to look lean. He's more linebacker than bodybuilder in a way. And that was important to us. Went through a, quite a process to figure out like what's realistic, but also what's the Hulk. I just wonder if Hulk should look to abomination like a normal person looks to Hulk, you know what I mean? You take a huge leap, you close your eyes and jump with some of this stuff because you can do fantastic drawings all day, but making it really come to life is a big roll of the dice. Because everybody was skeptical at first. Everybody was like, uh, I don't know if you can pull it off. It kind of like gets better. And yeah. Out, and and then I guess, yeah. If it straightens out, now it's like, Hulk's yes. Fate. You know, and then yeah. it's a cut. One of the, my criteria in the beginning was when they said that Hulk was going to be largely a digital creation was I said, well, if there's no way for me to play Hulk, then it's not really that interesting. Because as an actor, that's what sort of makes it complex. And you make that cut back, like, oh, he has a, you know, for the mm. first time, like, yeah. like you're seeing Banner and Hulk starting to fuse yeah, a little yeah, bit, yeah. and you can see him go, like, I think that's like a cheer moment. Edward likes things that aren't necessarily just on the surface. He likes to go deeper. He likes to find things that are, that are mythic. He has a very, very hard time focusing on, on what it is that's coming at him, and it always seems, in some ways, worse than it even is. Once he bought into doing this movie, and once he got on this movie, he invested himself so heavily that it's been an extraordinary experience for us. I can just keep going as long oh, as Oh, yeah, let's can. just do it. Okay.
the technology's come a long way, and there are ways now to be able to literally act the emotional nuances of Hulk and actually do the acting, both the physical movements, but also even a very nuanced kind of work, even on his face. We invested in the MOVA technology because it gave us a very dense map of the facial muscle system and gave us a lot of detail in how an actor's face moves. Speed. And action. MOVA Contra Reality Capture allows us to capture flexible surfaces like the face in 3D and with a high degree of precision down to about a tenth of a millimeter. So what we could then do is have Edward Norton's performance for The Incredible Hulk be exactly captured as he did it and then the visual effects people can go and take that and stretch out his face and extend all the different sizes and whatever else they want to do and make him into The Incredible Hulk. It's all of those subtleties that make the difference between a CG character and a human. So the more of that that we get from our actors, the less we have to keyframe once again. The more organic it'll look, the more you'll believe in the characters. Could we do um, one where we go from angry and then maybe to curious? So that technology is gonna help us <laughs> create a real organic movement to their facial performance. <laughs> what has been done before with motion capture is there's been dots put on the face, either little markers or you know um, painted dots, and you get very little information, just a few uh, spots, you know, maybe 200 spots on the face. What we do is we actually sponge on a phosphorescent makeup, and you get this random pattern that glows in the dark, and that glow from the phosphorescent makeup has a random pattern all around the face because it was sponged on. So one camera sees a random pattern, another camera sees the same random pattern, they triangulate, and that gives us the 3D surface. It's almost like we're barcoding every millimeter of his face, and that's never been possible before. I mean, literally, a year ago, there was no technology that was available to make that possible. And in the end, I think we got a pretty nice Hulk. He's a bit more of a street brawler. Um, he's less bright green. The stuff that our guys did was the muscles and the skin, the translucency and the veins, and it makes these shots just sing in terms of realism. It's, it's really fantastic stuff. Perfect. Veins come up. That's what I was doing last night. <laughs> <laughs> you see him looking and you see him go... Uh, you know what I mean? Like, you actually see him... You see Banner fight for control. We also, frankly, just did something much more lo-fi, which was video reference, just me acting out the creature's moments just in a video camera so that the animators can reference it, which is very lo-fi, you know, just literally them being able to look at it and use what you're doing as a reference for the animation. You know, that kind of thing. Lots of trial and error. We tried, it didn't work. Then we tried again, didn't work. Changed the texture, did this. Like, until the last minute. I mean, we literally found, you know, the shape of the face of Hawk last minute. It was finding the right balance between staying true to those caricatures, those extreme expressions. But at the same time, what Rhythm and Hughes has done with the technology is, I mean, the skin and the muscle and the textures, it looks real. There are close ups in this movie of him flexing his arms and even just moving and panning up his chest, where you will swear that we took a bodybuilder and, and painted him somehow. And it's not, it's all rhythm and hues, it's all computer generated. I think we've gone well beyond even what I remember in the best of the comics. I think this is a much more 21st century high impact kind of an experience.